Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Ms Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through blood glucose control. So this is another example of homeostasis and negative feedback which is how deviations from the normal values in this case blood glucose control are restored back to the original level through different mechanisms and it involves the nervous system and hormones. So for blood glucose the amount of glucose in your blood will increase after eating or drinking sugary drinks, basically anything containing carbohydrates. And it will decrease after exercise and if you haven't really eaten much as well. And this is detected by your pancreas. So the receptors are in the pancreas and this is within the endocrine cells of the pancreas. And in particular, it's called the islets of Langerhain. So these are the cells where the changes are detected. Now, these are also the effectors. So these are the glands, which are the effectors, which release the two different hormones, insulin and glucagon, to bring about changes to return your blood glucose levels to normal. Now, there is actually a third hormone involved that you don't learn about at GCSE, and that is adrenaline. An adrenaline hormone is released by the adrenal glands, which are shown here in yellow above the two kidneys. And we'll be looking at the role of adrenaline. So just to start, we'll have a look at the overview of the mechanisms, but then I'm gonna go into the details that you need on insulin, glucagon and adrenaline to see exactly how they cause these changes. So if the blood glucose levels increase, for example, after eating or having a sugary drink, those changes are detected by the islets of Langerhang cells, but in particular, you need to know it's the beta cells, and these are particular cells in the pancreas in the islets of Langerhang. And those beta cells will then respond by releasing insulin, and that insulin will then cause the liver cells, which is one of the target organs, but also the muscle cells, it will cause them to become more permeable to glucose, and therefore glucose will move from the blood and into the cells. And then enzymes within the cells become activated to convert the glucose to its insoluble store, glycogen. As I said, that mainly happens in the liver, but it does happen in the muscles as well. That glucose then is successfully removed from the blood and stored as glycogen in the cell, and therefore we've gone back to our normal glucose level. So in contrast, if the blood glucose levels decrease, and this might be you've not eaten for a long time, we've done a lot of exercise, this is still detected by receptors in the pancreas and the islets of Langerhang, but this time it's the alpha cells. And the alpha cells will respond by releasing the hormone glucagon, but also the adrenal glands will release the hormone adrenaline. And these hormones will then be transported in the blood. And when they reach the target organ, which is mainly the liver cells, it will cause what's known as the second messenger model to occur, which activates enzymes to hydrolyze glycogen back into glucose, that glucose can then be released back into the blood. So there's our summary, but we'll go through the details. And you need to be familiar with three key terms throughout. So I'm actually gonna start with these, breaking them down, so hopefully it makes it easier to remember. So glycogenesis. The first thing I wanted to point out is if you see genesis, that means you are making something. So glycogenesis is the process of when excess glucose is converted to glycogen. So you are making glycogen. We have a few little bits of extra information here as well. So this mainly occurs in the liver and that is how much the liver can store and that would last you about 12 hours. But that is extra information. The key thing, glycogenesis is making glycogen. Glycogenolysis, so the lysis part means to break down. So this is the exact opposite. Glycogen lysis, glycogenolysis, we're hydrolyzing glycogen back into glucose. 
The final term, just to make you familiar with, is gluconeogenesis. Gluco, meaning glucose. Neo means new. Genesis means to make. So what this means is we are making glucose from something new. And most of the time, its amino acids are used to make glucose. But it can also be using the glycerol from um, lipids to make glucose as well. And this step only happens if all of your glycogen store has been used up and you still need glucose, your body will then resort to breaking down lipids and proteins so it can undergo gluconeogenesis to still create some glucose. So let's have a look at how this links to the three hormones. And we're gonna start with insulin. So we've already said that the beta cells will detect the increase and the beta cells in the islets of Langerhang will then secrete insulin. And you need to know the three key actions that this then causes. So when the insulin is released, it's transported around the blood and it can attach to the receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells. And that is mainly the liver cell. So the first thing that happens is when it binds that target cell, it changes the tertiary structure of that channel protein. And that channel protein happens to be a glucose channel protein. And it causes it to open more, and therefore more glucose can move into the liver cell, which is the target cell, by facilitated diffusion. The second point, and we're going to look at this one in more detail, is that not only do the channels open more, but actually more protein carriers in these channels are embedded into the cell membrane. So we now have a larger surface area within the membrane that glucose can move from the blood into the cells by facilitated diffusion. The final action is that insulin activates enzymes within the cell to be able to convert glucose to glycogen, or in other words, that term we said, glycogenesis. So let's have a look at point number two in more detail. So we said that you get more protein carriers incorporated into the cell membranes. And what happens is when the insulin binds to the receptors, within the target cell, so I've said here it's the liver cell, that actually causes on the inside of the cell a chemical to be released. And within the cell, you'll already have these vesicles, so it's just basically plasma membrane as a sphere, but it contains more of these glucose channel proteins. And when insulin binds to its receptor, causing the release of this chemical, that chemical causes these vesicles all to move up, fuse and embed within the membrane. And in doing that, they're all embedding in the extra glucose channel proteins within them. And that is how we get more protein carriers or these channel proteins within the cell membrane to get even more glucose from the blood into the liver cell. So next then is the action of glucagon. So the alpha cells will now detect the decrease in blood glucose, secrete glucagon, and that glucagon transports around in the blood until it reaches the target cells, mainly the liver, and it binds to the receptors. Now this time what happens is, again, we're going to go through point number two in more detail. We have what's called the second messenger model. And this is when the glucagon binds, it causes a protein to be activated called adenocyclase, which is actually an enzyme. And that enzyme converts ATP into cyclic or cyclic AMP. And that's what we call our second messenger because that can then activate a final protein, a protein kinase, which can hydrolyze glycogen to glucose. So the second messenger model is explaining how glycogen is broken down to glucose. The final action is the activating of enzymes for gluconeogenesis, or in other words, converting glycerol and amino acids to glucose. But we're going to look at the second messenger model response to glucagon. 
So we have here the glucagon binding to the receptor. And at this stage, here is our adenocyclase and it's not activated. But once it is bound, it's going to activate that enzyme. And once that is then activated, that is what can then convert ATP to cyclic or cyclic AMP. So our first messenger is the glucagon because it activates adenocyclase. Our second messenger is cyclic AMP or cyclic AMP, and that is because it can activate protein kinase. So we've got this inactive form. When you have your cyclic AMP, it activates it, and that is the protein which can then hydrolyze glycogen into glucose. So lastly is the role of adrenaline, and this is also the second messenger model. So adrenaline is secreted by the adrenal glands if the blood glucose levels are too low. And it can increase the blood glucose in exactly the same way. So it's that second messenger model. But this time, instead of the first message being glucagon, the first message is adrenaline. But it causes the exact same chain reaction. So the last thing for you to be aware about is diabetes. And you don't need to know much detail here. But this is when blood glucose cannot be controlled, but it's just to do with the hormone insulin. So type 1 diabetes is due to the body being unable to produce insulin. And this is likely to be genetic in cause. It starts in childhood and it's normally a result of um, an autoimmune disease. And it's because the beta cells are being attacked. So therefore, the beta cells are unable to produce insulin. And the treatment normally involves administering insulin. Type 2 diabetes, however, is quite different. It's still to do with insulin, but the receptors that we looked at on the target cells lose their responsiveness to insulin. So even though the insulin will be binding to the receptor, you won't necessarily get the um, addition of those vesicles to the membrane to increase the channel proteins of glucose. And this usually develops later in life because of obesity and poor diet. So it can then be controlled by regulating your intake of carbohydrates, increasing the exercise, and in some cases as well, it will be um, administering insulin also. Key thing though is, when you're talking about type two diabetes regulating um, the carbohydrates, if you just said to control or regulate your diet, you wouldn't get a mark because the carbohydrates are what are increasing the glucose levels. So you do have to specify to do with carbohydrates. So that is it for controlling the blood glucose levels. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up.